You know, I can think of no better way to start this week than answering your questions on the Monday Mailbag Show. And this week, I'm answering your questions about X-Force, Mr. Sinister, Symbiotes, and a lot more, guys. Plus, the return of Drew the Rumor Guy. And if you're ready for all of that, you know what to do. Let's go smash it. Valley Flyer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Monday. I am Valley Flying. Welcome to the Valley Flying channel. I am back and I hope you had a great weekend. But now it is time to get back into the week, answering your questions from the Discord server. And if you are not already a member of the Discord server, make sure you use the link in the description to join that Discord server. And if you go to the mailbag channel, and leave a question there. Your question will potentially be answered in a future episode of this Monday mailbag video. Now, before we get into all of your awesome questions that you guys left, let me go out and give a big shout out to the word from one of our sponsors, Raid Shadow Legends. Are you ready for some epic fantasy in your life? If so, then Raid Shadow Legends might just be the game for you. This turn-based RPG is full of so much depth and an endless amount of ways to build your characters. And speaking of characters, there are hundreds of them with new ones being added all the time. So you're never gonna run out of stuff to do. We've got a bunch of different modes to battle in as well, guys. Campaigns, dungeon, faction wars, arena, and the clan boss. And look at the graphics of this clan boss, guys. And now with these ongoing tournament challenges, you could compete against the entire raid community for some really awesome rewards and raid artifacts. You can earn points various different ways like battling against the almighty fire knight the spider's den the ice golems pete and that notorious dragon and if you're a brand new player make sure you use the link below to download raid because you're gonna get the hookup you're gonna get a hundred thousand free silver in your account and the rare dwarf champion grumbler this guy is a really good starter champion for new players and your rewards they're gonna be waiting for you right here but do it now guys because these rewards only available for the next 30 days so come on what are you waiting for do it now and i will see you there so yes big thanks to raid for sponsoring this video and if you want to check out that game make sure you use that link in the description but now it is time to get to all of your questions from discord so without further ado guys it is time monday mailbag let's go all right all right first question of the week what's up from michigan brother i heard it's rumored after phoenix is star lord is that true and any idea who's after that all right so the rumor is that it should be star lord after phoenix and after that according to the schedule it should be invisible woman but fox next changes things up all the time they're hard to predict sometimes so even though that's how the events have been in the past and probably will be in the future not a 100 guarantee of that but should be invisible woman after star lord brother next question wondering if you mobile gamer and casino will put into an msf jeopardy game hosted by cerebro all about msf trivia and tricks who would win and why? Uh, probably Casino, because he spends the most time studying this game. Uh, next question. Greetings from South Carolina. Why does Ghost Rider's penance there not uh, have any effect on Carnage? It clearly does not in the comics. A uh, couple, couple options there. My first is that they either, the devs, they either did not know uh, about the interaction of Ghost Rider and Carnage, or they did know about it and they removed it just for game balance uh effect so that that is my most uh obvious reasons why if you guys know of any other reasons why this could not be in there let me know in the comments uh next question a bunch of questions there's a lot of them uh all right so first question is do you know if there's any graphics or lists that uh, list the mini uniques that we need to get from gear 13 to gear 14 i know there were some in the infographics channel a while ago so if you go to the discord server there uh check that out but uh i know they're do they're all done by uh tags their tags their uh origin tags so bio tech so on and so on and that is how these mini uniques are distributed so hopefully that helps you but yeah check out the infographic section if i see a better one in there i'll put that and then you could uh, have an easier time finding that uh who should i gear up captain marvel or black bolt uh I would say right now, Black Bolt's probably going to be in the meta a little longer. So even though you're using both of those characters, I would say probably go Black Bolt instead of Captain Marvel. Next question. Spend most of my core reserves to build up the Black Order team. 
They're low red stars, low gold stars. Is it worth taking the black orders to gear 13? I think they're at least worth taking the gear 12. Uh, once you start getting to gear 13, you're using some of those superior pieces, some of which you might want to use for other characters you're taking to the Dark Dimension 3 or whatever. So I would take them to 12 and hold them there once you're sure and absolutely sure that you're really investing in them then go to 13 then go 14 and this is a fun one did you learn hawaiian in school are you teaching your two kids uh learned a little bit words here and there there were days that we'd work hawaiian but uh there weren't there weren't like a class that i took that uh, studied the hawaiian language they do have those but i did not take it so because i don't know it very well i don't uh, teach it to my kids but you listed something here. Let me scroll up on this and uh, read this here. Ole no e lava ka makau kau mahoo kahi vale no olelo. So yes, I think uh, I think more than one language is not enough. The more the better. It's it's a, it's a good thing. Learning is always good, my friend. Uh, next question. What is up, Valley? Let's smash a long time listener. First time caller, just wondering if they plan to do anything with the Stark Tech points in the future. I've got thousands, all five categories maxed out. So the word back in the day that they were going to use these Stark Tech points to uh, upgrade the rooms. Not sure if they still have plans for that, but I'm in the same boat as you. They're maxed out and just kept investing them every single day. So hopefully we'll, there will be some way that uh, we could use these Stark Tech points and they won't just be going to waste. Next question, any idea where to put Vision? Because Ironheart will be taking his spot and have Minerva on a Black Order team without Ebony Moss would appreciate it. So uh, you can use um, the Vision in a uh, tech team. So some other tech team, maybe not the replacement of Thanos in a BKT, but maybe in uh, something with a Crossbones or something that still makes use of Vision and Star-Lord but uh, not Vision and Star-Lord, that makes use of Rocket and Star-Lord. But the other option is if you're not really uh, having anything to do with your Avengers, using maybe Cat, Black Widow, some of your other Avengers with Vision. Uh, those are the two routes I would go once uh, you want to replace Ironheart, uh, once you want to replace Vision with Ironheart. Next question, do you think if they took Blitz characters out of Raid, Blitz characters and Raid characters out of Premium Orbs, and they put them on Orbs, that uh, Premium Orbs would be better? They would be a lot better Hopefully, they will start doing this and make premiums premium again and make the megas mega again. They haven't been that way for a while. They, they've added characters. And I like the trend of them removing uh, Deadpool. And I think it was Killmonger possibly from the other. I don't, I don't remember the second character. But I lose like the sec, the trend of them removing characters from the mega orbs. So that is a good trend. Hopefully, they'll do the same with the premium orbs. Uh, next question, Valley Flyers. Wondering why I placed in the top 300 in arena. Never gotten that close to top 3% in blitz. Am I just that bad at blitzing? Uh, no, it's there's multiple shards for your arena. I'm not sure how many there are, but it's based on when you start in the game. And this is a very, this game has been out for over two years now. So there's going to be a lot of arena shards. As far as I know, there's only two blitz shards. One for newcomers, one for everybody else. So uh, that, that is why it's harder to place in blitz than in your arena, brother. Next question was wondering is it just me or do others also have distinguishing have distinguishing which character has buff or debuffs uh it's not just you sometimes there's a lot of buffs and debuffs on the field one thing you could do to make it a little easier is just uh hold on that character sometimes you'll see all the icons other times it's hard and it's uh it's not very organized so a lot of battles this doesn't really come into play but in some battles there's a lot of buffs debuffs on the field and it does get kind of confusing so hopefully there will be a way to address this uh in the future i don't think it's anything i've heard about you know in the near future but hopefully this is something that fox Next, uh realizes is something that's just a little bit annoying it doesn't occur often but hopefully this is something that they will uh address sometime uh thanks for answering my question a few weeks ago really helped me on my Cree team i am glad that it helped you brother Hope you're safe. Sending love from the UK. Wanted to know your opinion on taking Deadpool to tier 14. Six red stars on him. Very close to upgrading him. Especially if him or Cable are getting rebirths. Do you think it's worth investing in him? So uh, the word is that Cable and Deadpool are getting a rework to go along with this X-Force team. Now we've seen the kits of uh, Domino. We've seen the kits of Negasonic Teenage Warhead. They look pretty good, but we don't know the numbers. So while it does look good on paper... There's no way to confirm that until we see all of their numbers. So I'm thinking X-Force will be pretty good, though, which means Deadpool Cable 
probably getting good reworks not 100 sure you can take them up there and risk it or you can save all of your materials wait till the update comes out wait till we know confirmation of what is happening to cable what is happening to deadpool and at that point if you like what they're doing with the reworks then use your resources take them up the gear uh, I, I don't think there's a lot of harm in just waiting though you could save your resources and just wait till you we know exactly what these uh, potential reworks if any are going to be happening to deadpool and cable uh, what's up valley just screenshot my tune it says tier 15 coming soon how crazy do you think it will be tier, uh, to get to tier 15 uh so i wouldn't put too much weight in that coming soon i mean the alliance war was coming soon from beta so that that was coming soon for over a year so not sure if it's really coming soon but tier 15 how crazy do i think it'll be it'll be very crazy either introducing some new mechanic a new bottleneck mechanic like those mini uniques or just increasing what we need from the superior uniques the mini uniques and just making uh, a crazy amount required for all of those i don't know but i do think it's gonna be crazy once it eventually comes to the game brother uh next question what do you think that or wh why do you think phoenix gets a base stat boost when she turns into dark phoenix but thanos doesn't when he becomes empowered i think i you know this this is just me speculating so it may be totally off base here but i think uh they thought thanos would be too strong if he gets a stat boost when he becomes empowered so uh i mean he kind of is because uh all the are the uh, black order characters kind of have a passive or have a bonus in their passive so sort of does but not not like a direct one like phoenix but I just think it's because they thought he would be too powerful if he got that uh next question is, what is up from sunny denver hope you're staying safe wonder if it's ever been discussed with fox next on the creation of some sort of crafting system so the way it works we we discuss a lot of things ask a lot of questions there's uh most of the questions don't get answered some do and this this is one of the questions that no matter how many times it was answered not really uh how many times it was asked doesn't really get answered a lot so i don't think this is something that they have on their minds but there's also they've also done things never really answered a question just surprisingly added some new kind of features so um they may eventually settle on adding something like this but if they do it's not something that they're uh that they're disclosing right now if they're if they're adding this they're playing it very close to the vest because i haven't heard any rumors or anything about uh, some sort of new crafting system to make use of all those uh, garbage materials that we really have no use for now uh what is up valley ironheart worth having a high red stars on yes all characters are worth having high red stars on uh just pulled a six red star for her which means this time next year i'll be getting her there nice nice <laughs> i just want to be prepared so i think she is a good character she's a very good character on that power armor team not so great outside of that so if you're using on her power arm team she'll be very good the red stars will help with her damage help with her focus getting those defense downs on uh just make her a better character help her with a focus for the ability block so yeah good character uh yeah that not i personally i'm probably not going to be using her until i get her uh, built up enough to justify taking vision off of that team I, I don't have her there yet but much better character uh if you compare her to vision apples to apples on this power armor team valley just killed black bolt with special in the arena very next move minerva revives black bolt isn't that broken yes uh that shouldn't happen you're not supposed to be able to revive characters that black bolt kills but there's a lot of bugs going on with black bolt right now especially in the arena they mentioned some of them are getting fixed uh in this next update which i expect is sometime this week so hopefully this is something that get fixed but yeah that should not happen that is that is broken if uh his characters that he kills are getting revived would you say it's better defense up for allies and offense down for enemies or defense down and offense up for allies i think this one's uh, gonna be dependent on your team if you have a more beefy team that can survive you could get away with defense up and offense down for your enemies if you have more of a damage based team i think in that situation a good defense is going to be a very good offense so you want a defense down you want offense up for your allies so you kill the enemies better but i think i think both of these situations are good but which one is better is going to be based on what team you're bringing in uh next question is from nebraska here's a new pvp mode idea for the devs to consider let us know what you think best of three match where characters can be only used in one game a specific character can only be banned or rejected once per match i like that brings a little more strategy they did mention that there's another pvp mode coming i'm not sure if it's something 
uh, cool outside of the box like this or something uh, that has been rumored like a level balancing, a gear balancing for the uh, PvP mode. But uh, if they're going to be adding multiple PvP modes, I think this would be very fun. You know, you got to build three teams. You got to plan ahead for three teams. A lot more strategy than just one battle. So I like this. This is a good idea. Uh, next question. Should there always be a way to knock out seven star characters from Ultimus Orbs, three red stars before Luke Cage and so on? Uh, yeah, I like that. I mean, if you already have a character at seven red stars, I think it's beneficial for you to not have them available in some orbs that you're pulling. Is that a good thing for Fox next, aka Scopely? Is that something that they're likely to do? I don't know. That's very, very player friendly. Um, uh, it's, you know, sometimes it's very surprising. They do stuff that's totally in the player's benefit. Uh, this would be very much in the player's benefit. So I'm not sure if this would uh, be something they would do, but I think I would like it. You would like it. Most of the players would like it. So I would like if they did that. Uh, greetings, brother. Thanks for smashing it out of park with all the videos. Much appreciated question. Just level the legendary Shuri to level 70 gear tier 13. Wondering what T4s you would recommend for Ultimus 7. Seems like some of our abilities are too tied too much with Wakandans. And I just want a T4 of the ones that will help you with U7 the most. So she's got two. One that I think is a no-brainer. That is her ultimate. It gives her another round of healing that she does with that move. The other one that's not that apparent and is and is more going to help those Wakandans than uh, anybody else on raid is that uh, passive. Now, the passive is going to give her more health. So giving her more health means that she's going to do more healing. So indirectly, it's going to help her outside of that Wakandans team. It's going to have more of a direct benefit than that Wakandans team. But uh, if you were to do two, those are the two I'd recommend, the ultimate and the passive. Uh, next question, would you recommend putting a six Red Star Ghost Rider on arena defense? I have at gear tier 12, six, six, four abilities, debating on whether putting a T4 on his passive and perhaps his special. So if you're running that supernatural team, either running him on that supernatural team or off that supernatural team, I think you should do his passive. So arena or not, do his passive. I think it's worth it. I think you're going to get... Uh, a lot of uh, value from it, especially if you're doing full supernatural. Special, maybe, maybe not. Now, as far as putting him on arena defense, there's a seven red star ghost rider on or in my arena shard, and he doesn't uh, last. And I think that person actually replaced him on arena defense once Black Order came out. So if you're seeing Black Orders, if you're seeing Black Bolts, uh, maybe not worth it putting him on arena defense. But if you're not seeing that in your arena shard, could be worth it to put it there. Uh, there's a lot of variables that I don't know from this question, but a lot of it will depend on what you're seeing in arena and uh, so on and so on. So it, it could be, but definitely do his passive. Uh, next question is reading from the Philippines. Were you aware that free to play players are the vegans of MSF? Nobody asked them about their lifestyle, but they're more than happy to brag about it. I'm free to play. I haven't spent a dime on this game. I'm vegan. I don't eat meat. Meat is murder. Sounds similar, right? I think you're on to something there, brother. Pongo. Yes, yes. I got to give you a shout out. I think you are on to something right there, brother. Uh, next question. Which faction do you think is likely to get a rework first? Hand, Ravagers, or Avengers? Keep up the great content. So, uh, I'm going to go the long way with this question, brother. So, Avengers uh, is... All right. So, Black Widow. She was rumored to get a rework when her movie came out. That and, and possibly other Avengers happening around that time... But uh, her movie got pushed back to November. So I would say at the soonest, the Avengers rework coming in November. And that's just based on what was about Black uh, uh, Black Widow. All right, Ravagers. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is scheduled to come out at some time. I don't remember the date off the top of my head. So I think it's likely for the Ravagers to get a rework at that time. So just kind of through process of elimination, I'm going to say Hand is uh, the most likely to get a rework first. Uh, what is up, brother? Do you think Fox X can actually detect blood spots or are they just doing an empty threat in the hope that people don't use them? If they could find cheaters and ban them, they wouldn't do it already because it's affecting it is affecting their bottom line paying for blood spots instead of purchasing the character offers. So uh, a couple things. There's a couple theories on this that uh, Fox Next, a.k.a. Scopely, which I think they want to be referred to as now instead of Fox Next as Scopely. Uh, but I think uh, th there's a double edged sword. There's, there's or at least uh, the feeling in this community that they're not stopping this because this is helping to make them money. Also, people saying that, oh, this is losing them money because people aren't blitzing as hard. They could just use these bots. So I think the bottom line money wise, I think it's a double edged sword. But I think long term, it is in their best interest to stop the cheaters. 
Uh, as far as threats, one thing that I think a lot of people are upset right now about these blitz spots is that there have been no threats. There's been no official statement made by Fox next to say, no, this is cheating. We eventually will figure it out. We eventually will find you and you will be banned. There has been nothing said like that or you know what, Blitzbots is what it is. It's not cheating, it's just uh, pressing auto. They haven't said anything. So I think that's leading to a lot more people starting to use these Blitzbots. Again, that's just an opinion, but I think that they are starting to use those more and more and more because FoxX has not denounced these Blitzbots. As far as whether they can actually detect them or not, I have no idea. I have no idea what information is shared back with uh, them when they uh, get the information from your whatever device you're playing on. So I don't know how easy or hard it is to detect this. Maybe it's something that's very difficult because it's just scripts pushing buttons and not going into the actual code. Or maybe it's something that's very easy. I have no idea. But uh, I, at the very least, I would like Fox to come out and say this is cheating or say it's not cheating, whatever. But I want them to make an official statement just uh, on their stance on Blitzbots. Next question. Now that we've seen Negasonic Teenage Warheads Ultimate in the blog post, is it fair to say that X4 seems to be designed with the Asgardians in mind? I think it was fair to say that from that Domino post last week where they said the Gods of Alliance War, kind of hinting that this team would be an Asgardian counter. As we see uh, more and more of their kit, it's looking like uh, that is shaping up more in mind. I think the better question is, are they going to be able to counter some of these other teams like the Mercs? like Hydra. I think that's the bigger question because I think uh, just looking at what we've seen so far and maybe their stats don't back it up. Maybe the percentages in their kits don't back it up. But what I've seen so far, I think uh, this team is going to be an X-Force counter. Uh, next question, brother. I've noticed that Symbiote Spider-Man's basic puts two turns of defense down on someone and I don't have the T4 in him. Is that a bug or is there a typo? Uh, it's. I think it is a bug or there's some kind of interaction going on in your match that uh, is not being accounted for. Like maybe another character putting that T4 on. I'm not sure, but uh, yes, he's not supposed to be putting two turns of defense up uh, unless you have that T4 in there, brother. So if he's doing that and it's not due to any other character interaction, it is definitely a bug. And I would write into support about that if uh, you experienced that multiple times. You can confirm that uh, on your device. Uh, next question from Central Cali. Uh, next question, maybe from Texas as I transfer later this month. Well. Welcome to the Lone Star State. I'm kind of a newcomer myself. So I had a random thought. What do you think of an energy steal as an ability? I think it'd be cool to see a character in the future be able to steal and possibly redistribute energy. I think this would be an awesome, awesome mechanic. Could be very annoying in like some of the raids, but as far as someone on your team that would do this, I think this would be very cool. Now, uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure which character in the Marvel Universe this would be appropriate with, but I'm sure there's a ton of them. So guys, let me know in the comments if this were ever a, um, what is what do you call that? A ability or uh, some kind of move that would come to the game. Let me know who you would want to see this have this in their kit. This this could be something very cool. Uh, if, it, if, you, if you have it on your team, you could disrupt the ability energy of the enemies for this. Uh, next question. Uh, Valley, long time fan, first time mailbag question. So as a result of the power creep, Avengers, not that great. Each team member seems to be on their own, except for a few. Captain America is my favorite character, and it kind of sucks he does not have a great home. What characters do you think they could add to create a strong home for Cap? Uh, since they're getting all of his friends off and moving them to onto other teams, it looks like Black Widow maybe moving on to another team. Not sure if they're going to do that with our Avengers rework when her movie comes out or if they're going to give her another team as well. But one way you could go, uh, you could utilize a character that uh, is in the game right now, doesn't really have a specific home, Winter Soldier, and then get the rest of the Howling Angels, Dum Dum, all the rest of them, and team him with Cap, maybe put him in that team. I, I Personally, I'd rather see an Avengers team or something with more popular characters. But if uh, these characters need a team, this is, this is the only option that I could think of. If there's another one, though, and if some of you guys that are way more versed in the comics than I am, let, let me know in the comments. Uh, who would be another good team for Captain America? All right, thanks for all the content, brother. Thank you guys. Thank all of you guys for watching. Keep smashing it for us down in New Zealand. Quick question. I've run across a T3 ability mat choke point. And would it be better to get characters teams to 6664 or 5553? Best way to go about it. So... If you're on your main teams, I definitely think a lot of the characters need to be at 664 to really get their abilities up to a usable level. There might be some, and I can't think of any off the top of my head, that might be usable at 5553, but 
Uh, in general, your main teams, you want to get up to 6664 with some T4s. And then your backup teams, you can have them at 5553 with the intent uh, eventually of getting up to 6664. So your main teams, get them as high as you can. If you're not as uh, high teams, just work on them in the background and build them up to that usable level, whatever that usable level is for you. And then just start slowly bringing all of them up. Uh, that That is what my recommendation would be, brother. Uh, would it be better off using my 150 promo credits on a single character, such as Ghost Rider or Phoenix, or using them for three, four star promotion, possibly the Cyclops, Colossus, etc. So uh, in general, I'm going to... I think that it's better for you to use your promotion credits on one character, make that character really, really strong. But there are some uh, outstanding circumstances. Like if you have a character that is uh, on a team, the rest of your team has a lot of real good red stars. And this one character is really just kind of holding them back. I think at that point it would be worth it to break it up. But in general, I'd rather use them to get uh, characters, higher red stars, one character as high red stars as possible. Um, especially if it's a character like Phoenix. Uh, next question. Yo, Valley, sup? Uh, keep getting different masks from purchases. I bought the Spider-Man pack that was supposed to come with gold orbs and got training orbs uh, and got purple mats instead. Also, the improved syringes you can buy for 99 cents will also give you a secret intel. Is there some uh, new business model uh, to give us things different than we purchased? So uh, I, if they're doing that, I think that is unintentional because if there were uh, selling things and giving you something different that's bait and switch and you have a case against them if you want to get your money back or potentially even take them to court so uh any errors i i am assuming that they're not done um on purpose uh you know just judging by their history they they make errors and have to correct it so i think this is just another error but yeah, I don't think they would be doing that stuff on purpose because it opens up to a bunch of legal problems for Scopely on that uh, on that end. Uh, next question. Do you think it would be better to have characters with the war bonuses and not have offense and defense on them? Because I would like to use my Merc on offense. I really like Taskmaster. So do I think it was better? I would like this personally a lot more. Uh, personally, you know, if you were to ask me, no war and no raid bonuses. Just all of those things happen in every mode. But that's my personal opinion. I'm not sure if that would break the game. I'm not sure if that would be good for the game. But I think I would like that on a personal note. Uh, I, you know what? I, I've never been a fan of war defense bonuses. War offense, not the hugest fan of, but I understand them. War defense, kind of boring because you're just leaving those characters there. and You're not using those teams. So, yes, I, I would be in favor of this change if it were to come to the game. Uh, I pulled a seven red star Proxima two weeks ago using C theory. Uh, that is that is awesome. Congratulations. This is a very good character. I have her at six red star gear 13 T4s in her passive and special. Do you think I should go hard with her T4s now? Or are there more important on uh, important black order T4s currently? Thanos passive and alt. Those are very important. Call passive. Uh, his his uh, ultimate is pretty good as well. I don't think that's a huge requirement though. Uh, none on Ma. Ma has a few good ones. Uh, Ma has a special and an ultimate that helps the team out a lot. So those are two that I would be do before the pro the rest of the Proxima. Corvus has a good passive as well. So before the rest of the Proxima, I would do the ultimate and special on Ma and the passive on Corvus. After that, uh, you could kind of line up the basics with Corvus and Proxima because those have some good synergy with each other. They they make each other's bone uh, basics better. And then you might want to do the passive on Cull as well. But uh, yes. Do, do Maw first, then Corvus, and then you could go back to Proxima at that point. Uh, next question. Love streams. Listening to them daily while driving as part of my mail routine. Nice. Uh, I dumped everything into Asgard, Inhumans, and Black Order. My three strongest teams right now. Those are really good teams to choose for your three strongest. Uh, this caused me to ignore a lot of other characters. Namely, Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four Cyclops, Blob, and Toad. I need to know who do I level next, or should I push hard for Ironheart? Fairly competitive in war. So... Two characters here, Ironheart, Cyclops. They are going to make some really good war teams even better. I don't know if you need that. For me, I would rather work on new teams that aren't online yet. So Ironheart, you know, power armor is very good with vision. I don't know if you need her, uh, you know, unless you're really looking for a specific Hydra counter, which they should be able to do after they fix her ultimate whenever the update drops. Cyclops, very good character, makes that X-Men even better, but X-Men without Cyclops, a very good team as well. So I would go either Fantastic Four, bring them online, build yourself another war offense team, or 
if you have the rest of the brotherhood finished up, you could finish that or you have the rest of the brotherhood built. You could finish it off with a strong blob and a strong toad to give you a strong brotherhood 2.0 team. Uh, either one is up to you. I think Fantastic Four is capable of countering a few more teams in war, uh, but 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 Brotherhood 2.0 is very good in war too. They they have some good meta teams that they counter as well. So either one of those, but I I, I would probably hold off on Cyclops and Ironheart out of those choices, brother. Uh, next question. I currently have a seven red star Taskmaster. Once I get the gold stars, uh, he's at level 71, gear 13. My question is. Will he be worth the investment to take him to 75, 14? And if so, should I wait until I have the obtainable shards to uh, get him to seven gold stars? Uh, if it were me, I probably would. I, you know, I'm, I, there may be some exceptions, but in general, I usually don't like taking uh, non uh, seven star characters to gear 14. Uh, the exception probably Symbiote Spider-Man, but pretty much everyone else, yes. Now with Taskmaster, uh, before you take him up and build him that much, you got to ask yourself where you're going to use him. Because if you're just using him for war defense, uh, it's going to make that team a lot better. Uh, but it's a war defense team. And for me, that doesn't have a lot of value. So if you're if that uh, game mode has a lot of value for you, then you're going to have a big, big uh, return on your investment for this. But if you're thinking of maybe a Dark Dimension 3 or using him in Rage or some uh, other mode, Probably not going to be as valuable, so I wouldn't uh, be investing too hard in him. Right? I have a very similar situation. Pulled a six red star Taskmaster, but haven't done any uh, put any investment in him. I'm working on other characters right now, so for me, I would probably hold it. But uh, it, it, it depends what you're going to use it for. Maybe you value other game modes than uh, than I do. So it, it, it possibly, possibly, but I, I wouldn't. Uh, next question: uh, Why is the Chaos Theory event so lame? I think it's kind of lame because a lot of people were expecting more silver promotion credits, you know, and then you can't really get a nice upgrade every time this event comes around. And I think that's what a lot of people were expecting. Uh, hopefully they add some more promotion or gold promotion credits to our economy or to this event. Either way, I would be happy with. Uh, so I finally did it. Invested all my resources into farming Wakandans, powering them up for the Chaos Theory event and completed tier six. Should I invest even more time and resources into getting the 300 character shards? Uh, tier six has a lot of rewards. Bringing them up to complete tier seven may not be worth the investment. I don't think bringing them up specifically for this event is worth the investment. I think it's gonna be more uh, value for all of your resources to focus more on your arena teams or your raid teams and working on the Wakandans, at least as far as star levels in the background. Now, if you have a lot of resources, you have a lot of energy and you can farm these characters as, as well as farming some of your main teams or some of your main characters, then do it. I don't know if I would rest in too many resources into the gear, but as far as just farming shards, if you could do it in the background, then do it. But I, this wouldn't be my primary focus, not specifically for a Chaos Theory event that comes around every month. Uh, next question. So how's the heat in Texas treating you? It's definitely getting hotter. It's not it's not crazy yet, but you can definitely feel that the temperature is shifting. First time rewards for the Chaos Theory event are juicy. Lots of gold, lots of silver. Takes uh, enough gold to take one character to six red. But the first time rewards at tier seven, only getting 21 tokens per month means every five months taking one character to six red. That's a long time. Uh, what are your thoughts? So. When this event first came out, we had a bug that gave us a lot of silver and a few gold promotion credits before that. So I thought if they were to keep giving us these silvers and golds in other ways, the, the amount that we get from this Chaos Theory event is fine. If this and our daily login is the only opportunity we have to get silver promotions and um, gold promotion credits, then uh, they need to do something to infuse more of these into the economy, That, in my opinion. I think that's way too little to get excited about. Uh, there's may way too many characters being released every month that this would not break the game. So this is something that I would like to see more uh, rewards in Chaos Theory or more promotion credits coming through other means in the game. Uh, I, I just don't think what we have right now is enough to uh, be sustainable long term, unless unless you're spending crap load of money. Uh, greetings from Wales here. What is up, brother? Long time the watcher of your MSF content. Love your enthusiasm. Thank you, brother. Uh, first time asking a question, so be gentle. I will try. I will try. Uh, I have gear, uh, Phoenix to gear 14, and she is my first to that level. I'm trying to get into Dark Dimension 3 as quick as possible. Be, being mainly free to play means this takes an age. Any hints or tips at all for players in my position that might get me in quicker? 
Uh, geez, it's, it is a tough road, a lot of RNG involved and a lot of patience. The main thing that you're going to be patient for is your superior uniques. That is a huge bottleneck and probably even more of a bottleneck is those mini uniques. And the only way you could get in there faster is just to get those faster. The only way to get those faster is to refresh your supply store, is to refresh your war store and do better in war to open up more of those war orbs. Those are the only places you could get mini uniques. So up, upping your chances that you're going to see those more often is the only way you're going to get into there quicker. That, that is the only tips I have. If you guys any know, have any more, leave them in the comments. Hopefully help the community out. All right, uh, Valley, going back and forth. Who to take into Cosmic Dark Dimension 3? I have Captain Marvel and Hela. Who would you take with them? Uh, you have Loki, Thor, Ebony Ma, Sif, Proxima. So based on the synergy with who you already have and based on their stars, their red stars and their gold stars, I would go Loki over Thor. Ebony Ma is a good choice, but not very, not as many red stars as uh, Loki. Proxima, you probably want to build Corvus if you're going that. Sif would work, but I think I'd rather have Loki than Hela. So Loki is my answer to your question, brother. Uh, wondering if I use Hela, Scientist Supreme, Sif, Minerva, and Starlord, would they be good as a team to get you Dark Dimension 2? Because I know Sif has a low cooldown ton to drive fire away from Min. Uh, that would be good. You got the main two there. You got Minerva, you got Starlord. Sif can uh, do some tanking, so find whoever you can get those uh, superior uniques for. Uh, other two characters that are pretty good that you're probably going to use on other game modes. That's who I would use for your last two, brother. Uh, greetings from upstate New York. Can you go into the first stage of Dark Dimension 3 with less than five characters? I thought I heard Casino say he did a later stated note with just four eligible characters. So to get into the first node of Dark Dimension 3, you need five eligible characters. Every subsequent node, every subsequent run, you could go in with less than that. But to get in, you need those five. So yeah, city nodes, global nodes, you could have less, but yeah, you need those five to initially get in there, brother. Uh, my alliance is getting... 30% on Ultimate 7 right now. Do you think going back and forth, getting the Ultimate 6 first time rewards is worth it? Seems to be good and would like to hear your thoughts. So what my alliance is doing once in a while when we know we're going to have a war that might be tough. Well, you can't know when you're going to have a tough war, but once in a while when we know we have a war coming up, maybe our last one is tough. Maybe we're going to take off. We Once in a while, we'll do the Ultimate 6s. Most of the time we're on Ultimate 7, but once in a while we'll go back and get those uh, first time clear rewards for Ultima 6. Probably do that until they're all done and then just run Ultima 7 exclusively at that point. That's what we're doing. Uh, I'm not sure if your alliance is in the same position, but uh, it sounds like a good idea. So I didn't question my leadership when they said they're going to do that. What's up, brother? Big hello from sunny Pittsburgh, PA. Can someone suggest, uh, someone suggested last week working on your mailbag, but I was wondering if you tried this team. I did. They're pretty fun. Call Obsidian, Black Bolt, Thanos, Minerva, and Ma. My team is only 221k uh, total, but still did fun on Blitz. Punched up 70 to 80k so far. So I did try that team on Ultimate 7. Had a little issue with my Minerva. My Minerva's a little low right now. Probably need to build her up a little bit more uh, for that team to work properly. Probably need a little more of my Thanos as well. But yeah, the theory crafting on this team, very, very strong. I like that team. Also seen some different versions with other characters in place of Call Obsidian. Uh, but yeah, this is a good team. I just need to work on my characters a little more to make it work for me. Uh, what is your current main Ultimate 7 team? So uh, I'm using that team that uh, we talked about earlier. There's a couple other teams that I'm trying, but I think my main team, my default, whenever one of these experimental teams doesn't work as well, I always go back to Black Bolt, Yo-Yo, Symbiote, Spider-Man, Scientist Supreme and Shuri. That's my main five. But there's there's a bunch of teams I run nowadays. Ever since the raids difficulty selectors came out, uh, can't just auto it with the same team. So I'm, I'm having to use different teams nowadays, brother. Uh, hope you are staying safe. Same to you, brother. Uh, question is about Mr. Sinister now that he's farmable. Which T4 should I be looking in order to have his clones at maxed ability? Don't have any orange materials, so I have to be very selective. And I like that ability first. It is his ultimate. That is what you want to do first. Back in the day, it was his ultimate and his passive. Nowadays, all you need to do for his clones is the ultimate. Everything else will just do what it says on the ability. So if you think it's worth it, then do that. But the ultimate is what's going to really benefit his clones. So do that one if you uh, are looking for your clones to be strong, brother. Uh, next question. Set back a while. Pull the seven red star sinister and ask if I should buy his offers. Wait till he is farmable. 
I may have bought some offers along the way, but now that he's going through War Store, it won't be long. 45 more shards until he's reached my full potential. Question is, at seven Red Star, fully maxed out, is he the best character in the game? He's definitely up there. I wouldn't say he's the best character in the game. I still like Phoenix. I still like Black Bolt. Uh, you know, you can make an argument for Ultron still, even with uh, Black Bolt in the game. Uh, Sinister's definitely up there. I, I I don't think he is the best character in the game, but definitely one of the best characters in the game. And, and it's going to be scary anybody fighting you with your seven red star fully maxed out Sinister. Those clones are going to be beefy, brother. All right. Uh, with the announcement of Negasonic Milestones, do you think they're delaying the third run of Symbiote Spider-Man? Hard to say because they never really gave a date for the third run of Symbiote Spider-Man and they never gave a date for Negasonic uh, Warhead. So it's hard to say at this point, but my guess is Spider-Man is going to come after Warhead. Uh, Valley Fine, is there a prediction or a set date to expect Symbiote Spider-Man to return soon? Been a few weeks, so it shouldn't be too far away. Keep it the good work. So right now we have Captain Marvel milestones going. If it is true that Negasonic is getting her milestones, then I think there'll be a little break. Then after Captain Marvel will be Negasonic. And then there'll be a little break after that. May it possibly will be Symbiote Spider-Man returning, but I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll we'll have to see. I, nothing nothing I've seen has been official, so uh, things are all subject to change at this point, brother. Uh, with the new Symbiotes, hopefully coming soon to the game with the Wakandan event, I want to take Venom to five red stars and T4 his passive. I believe it would greatly benefit the team. So his passive is, is going to benefit himself, give him more max health, and in turn benefit the team. But his passive directly is not going to benefit a team. His passive at T4 is just going to give him more max health. But yes, it will indirectly benefit his team as well. I'm not sure. I mean, if you have Symbiote Spider-Man and Carnage uh, a little beefier, I would probably build them first and then go Venom. I think he's the third most important character to that team. But uh, if if that five red stars is so far above those other two, then uh, you probably should take him above because he's going to have a little more power. So... Hard to, hard to say if you should build Venom first uh, without knowing the rest of your roster, but definitely worth the investment. Uh, it's just which order you should do the investment in is, it would be my only question. I think the other two symbiotes are more valuable. Next question. Do you think Cyclops and Spider Milestones will become farmable soon? Cyclops to Raid Source, Symbiote Spider-Man to Milestone Orb seems appropriate. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, so I think that's the likely scenario. We got we got two kind of different versions of the milestones. We have the Captain Marvel, Coulson, and Symbiote Spider-Man. Those are the ones that usually end up in those milestone orbs. And then we got the Namor, Mysterio, Cyclops version, and they usually end up farmable. At least the other two did. Cyclops was a little different, so I'm expecting him to end up farmable somewhere. Raid store, possibly. Maybe another store. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, th I do expect Cyclops to be farmable at some point. All right, the next question. Can you talk to Drew the Rumor Guy for me and ask if he can give us any potential hints for the next legendary character hopefully the symbiote so drew it has been a while my friend hopefully you're doing well can you tell us any rumors about the next legendary character is it a symbiote oh what's going on valley drew the rumor guy is so happy to be back now i've not heard anything about a symbiote legendary but it does not mean that the next legendary character is not from the spider-verse all right, so I guess it doesn't appear that there's a symbiote legendary. Uh, at least that's not what Drew has heard. Next question, brother. Greetings from Fox Inc. Ground Zero, Los Angeles. Longtime listener, second time poster. Did you ask Drew the Rumor Guy if he heard Gamut might have a Marauders tag? Asked last month, I believe, where he said he heard rumors he might be. So a follow-up question. Uh, would you hope for Gambit to provide a Marauders tag to make the team whole? Uh, so for me personally, I I did at one point because I wanted Gambit in a game, but uh, someone mentioned if he does get that tag, he's going to be the fifth, which means he's probably not going to be in the X-Men. So uh, I am hoping that he does not get the Marauders tag at this point. But Drew, what is going on? Is there going to be Gambit in the game? Is he going to have a Marauders tag? Let us know. So I have had a rumor about an X-Men coming in July, but I have not heard a rumor about a marauder coming in july so word of an x-men coming in july no word of a marauder coming in july so if gambit is that x-men probably not gonna have the marauder tag if he's not that x-men he still can i don't know drew I, i'm gonna need a little more information but uh i'm gonna ask you this next question from uh magic here first and a, a first quest and a request first uh please don't use the roach background again oh 
Uh, yeah, that, that came about kind of last minute. We had another background scheduled, but uh, that, that one came about last minute because of all the bugs that were in the game. Uh, second, any chance Drew the Rumor Guy knows if there are any magical characters possibly coming, say in August, potentially. Uh, Drew, any magical characters on their way? That's a big NL, mate. These ears have not heard anything about any magical characters. But the shoot through here, grab another tinny. But before I go, I'll leave you with one word, mate. Isotel. Oh! Drew, that was a pretty big bombshell you just dropped on us, my brother. All right, so the community's reaction was pretty mixed when this have when this word was uttered the last time, guys. So let me know what you think of this in the comments. Is this something you're looking forward to, or is this something you're fearful of? I think I think I'm still a little mixed on this, guys. So let me know your thoughts. And I want to thank everybody that left a question on the Discord server before you guys go. Uh, whether it got answered or not, I do want to thank you guys. And if you want your question potentially featured in an upcoming Monday mailbag video, make sure you are a member of the Discord server. The link is down below. I also want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. And you guys, thank you guys for watching. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash on that like button. Join the notification squad. Obviously, subscribe. Share this with all your friends, guys. And I will see you guys next time. Make sure you check me out on social media. Good stuff there. And make sure you check out some of the other links if you want to support the channels. There's, there's a bunch of links that support the channel down below. Give me a hog fist bump before you go. Bye-bye. Valley flying. Out.